This is an H100 graphics chip. This little piece of silicone is what makes ChatGPT possible. It is also the reason why ChatGPT was built from the ground up to suck at doing real work. You see, this NVIDIA chip that can literally fit in your hand costs $30,000, and you need at least eight of them to run one of your ChatGPT prompts. This means when you're asking ChatGPT to do something, you're essentially borrowing a Lamborghini from them. But wait, don't they have boatloads of money? I mean, they're raising billions upon billions of dollars. Well, the problem isn't even all about the hardware cost. You need to build out tons and tons of infrastructure to run a large number of these chips. On top of that, there's a limited supply of these H100 GPUs. They are back ordered for several months right now. I mean, there's a reason why Nvidia stock is up hundreds of percentage points in the last two years. Everyone is trying to get their hands on these chips. The other thing is, OpenAI, the makers of ChatGPT, have never been focused on making money or profits. Just a few months back, they completely turned off the ability to upgrade to a Plus account because they were over capacity. And then just recently, they released their latest and greatest model, GPT-40. And to everyone's amazement, it was available to both paid and free users for the first time ever. This would be like Netflix coming out with a free plan where you can watch 10 shows or movies a week for free. That would literally destroy their entire business. It's pretty obvious that the goal of OpenAI is not to generate profits. All they really wanna do is be the first to achieve true AGI, which is artificial general intelligence. And to get to AGI, they don't need profits. What they need is to be perceived as the leader in the AI space so that they can raise enough money to hire the best engineers in the world and build out huge infrastructure for training. You see, they need to strike a balance between having something very impressive, but at the same time making sure that whatever they do have isn't so useful and amazing for everyday work that their systems go down and they lose their reputation and will be unable to raise money and hire engineers. They need to maintain this delicate balance to make sure their servers don't melt down. Now, how do I know that ChatGPT would be amazing for work if they actually fully opened it up? Well, let me show you. Here's a blog article from Stripe. I'm gonna ask ChatGPT to summarize it into one sentence where every word starts with the letter S. As you can see, the result is very impressive. It was actually able to summarize what the article was about in two seconds while only using words that start with the letter S. If you were to ask a human to do this task, they would actually have a lot of trouble with it. Now, think to yourself, if you were to break down the work that accountants, lawyers, and other professionals do into simple tasks, ChatGPT can do maybe 80% or even 90% of those tasks, but obviously you're not seeing that happen right now. And to go beyond that, how much of your work does ChatGPT currently do? I'm sure you're not using ChatGPT for most tasks within your job. You're probably using it very little or almost not using it at all. So what exactly in their user interface do they have that blocks people from fully using ChatGPT to its full its current potential? The first and biggest thing is the ability to use multi-step prompting. Wait, what is multi-step prompting? This is when you take a task and split it into multiple steps. So think of, let's say, generating a partnership agreement. Instead of asking ChatGPT to generate a partnership contract for my business, you would take that task and split it into multiple prompts. So prompt one would be generate an outline of 30 clauses for the partnership agreement. Then prompt two would be to generate the first five clauses. Prompt three would be to generate the next five clauses and so on. This would allow ChatGPT to create a much longer and much more in-depth contract that is comparable to something a lawyer can draft. Think to yourself about the projects you currently do. I'm sure they involve multiple steps, such as you do some research, you have to do some work, and then you have to analyze it, check the results. You don't perform tasks in a single step. The reason multi-step prompting is so powerful is because each ChatGPT prompt only has a finite amount of so-called AI horsepower. So what you can do is break down a problem into multiple steps, then combine the power of multiple ChatGPT prompts to generate an answer that is much longer, much higher quality, 
and much more well put together than you could ever do with a single prompt. Now, don't just take my word for it. Here's a performance graph comparing one-shot GPT-4 prompting to multi-step GPT-4 prompting. This jump from 67% to 88% might seem small, but without multi-step prompting, you would need a model hundreds of times more powerful to get this kind of result. Because we all know how much of a difference it makes to have a prompt that is very well thought out. Or let's take that even a step further. ChatGPT can even write the prompts for you. You would just tell it your job and it would create a prompt library for your work that could automate different parts of your task. This might seem insane, but this is actually very easy for them to build. They have tons of data on exactly how people use their platform. In fact, they show you random use cases of how to best use ChatGPT when you load a new chat. But then most of your work happens in spreadsheets and documents and even emails. Why can't ChatGPT be inside all your web apps where you can highlight different things and have ChatGPT be your personal assistant? If you're thinking this is just too much to ask for, well, they don't even bother with the little things. Here's what a good ChatGPT prompt looks like. If you paste that into ChatGPT, you will see that their input is tiny and it's not designed for these types of detailed, high quality prompts. I literally had to write all my prompts in a separate text file and paste them into ChatGPT because their input is so small and unusable. So you're probably thinking, okay, why am I making this video? Am I just here to rant and complain? The reality is actually the opposite. I've spent the last year absolutely obsessed with upgrading ChatGPT myself. You see, I found a way to use a Chrome extension to actually unlock all these features and bring these capabilities to ChatGPT that were impossible before. I found a way to unlock multi-step workflows inside of ChatGPT. This means that you can click one button and add multiple steps and have these steps work together to generate a massive project in just one click. Then I created a prompt library where you could literally type in what your job is, what you do, and ChatGPT will brainstorm with itself and create an entire custom prompt library to automate your work. You can use this for accounting, law, marketing, or any other field or profession. It's even great for personal use. For example, if you're a dad with two kids, you just type that in and now you have a whole prompt library of different activities and things that ChatGPT can help with in your personal life. Then I also found a way for ChatGPT to break out of the chat window and be your assistant across the web, writing your emails, doing your documents, helping with spreadsheets, and even allowing you to chat with YouTube videos. And then when I went back to ChatGPT and fixed all the little annoying things, like that tiny little prompt input box, with one click, you can open up a massive input where you can type in amazing long form prompts. These are just some of the many things that I've unlocked in ChatGPT over the past year. But the crazy thing is that I never set out to build any of these things. In fact, I set out to build something completely different. But then I got scammed, lost thousands of dollars, and stumbled on this one thing that opened my eyes to a whole world of possibilities inside of ChatGPT. This one thing allowed me to see the immense power of ChatGPT that I couldn't see before. Think of it as, you know, sometimes you find a clue when you're researching something and it totally changes your view of everything. So it all started in March 2023 when ChatGPT released GPT-4. As soon as I heard about this new AI that is truly human-like, I had to test it out. My first impression was that I was completely blown away with it. I was blinded by how amazing it was. I couldn't even see any of its shortcomings or limitations. It was like an iPhone moment. I couldn't believe a product like this is even possible. But within a week of using it, I noticed just one thing missing a prompt library. There's a huge difference between well-crafted prompts and the quick ones I come up with on the fly. I would love to save and reuse the long-form prompts I create by having a prompt library. 
At my previous software startups, I worked quite a bit with Chrome extensions. So I knew this was the best and really the only way to add new features to ChatGPT. I pulled together a team of my top three software engineers and we set out to build a prompt library Chrome extension for ChatGPT. It would let you easily organize and save your prompts. As my developers were building it, I always have this tendency of adding more features and adding more functionality. So I talked to my developers, I said, you know, I've got this amazing idea. And they're like, no, we're not adding anything else. We're never going to finish this project. And I said, you know what, this idea has nothing to do with building more software. Why don't we hire a bunch of prompt engineers and have them create these amazing handcrafted prompt libraries for lawyers, accountants, marketers, and all these major professions. They would be included in the software so that you can choose your profession and you would have a pre-built and ready to go prompt library that would automate your tasks for your job. It seemed like the most brilliant idea at the time. Who would not want a prompt library to automate the work? Most people don't even know all the things that ChatGPT can do. So I hired these prompt engineers and they were really good at coming up with prompts. I spent tens of thousands of dollars on this. They built out these prompt libraries inside of Notion because we didn't even have our software ready yet. They were just adding them manually into Notion and then at the end, when my software was built, I was just gonna import them right into the Chrome extension. This way I wouldn't waste time. The developers were building the software, the prompt engineers were making the prompts, and once they were both done, we can combine the two. So about a month and a half later, both the prompts and the software was done. My software engineers imported the prompts and I started using them for marketing because this is my background. And I realized, wow, these prompts are really good, but they're useless. Because you see, marketing has so many nuances. You know, I could be doing search engine optimization, Facebook ads, or even organic marketing. There are just so many different things within the field. You can't make a general prompt library for a specific industry. There's just too many niches within every industry and field. At this point, I realized that I just spent over $10,000 on these prompts and they're useless. I was totally bummed out about it because I'm not going to release a bunch of prompts with the software and rave about it when it's not even useful. Then about a week later, I stumbled on something that would totally change my view on everything and take the software project in a totally new direction. You see, all these prompt engineers were using my pay chat GPT accounts to brainstorm ideas because that was the only way to have access to GPT-4 at the time. I told them they can brainstorm ideas on different professions by using chat GPT. Now I have my own chat GPT account, but that day I ran out of credits. So I logged into the account I created for my employees and realized, holy crap, they didn't use the accounts just for brainstorming ideas. They literally had Chad GPT write almost all the prompts I just paid over $10,000 for. Everything was done by Chad GPT. These guys just created a manual workflow inside of Chad GPT where they were manually creating and just cranking out all these prompts. You're probably thinking, wow, you felt terrible about this. I mean, I just spent thousands of dollars and they use AI to generate everything. But I guess that's what you get, right? A good prompt engineer, if they can automate the work with AI, is going to do it. You can't fully blame them. So I'm thinking, you know what? If ChatGPT is so good at generating prompts, why don't I just have the AI generate prompts for people on the fly? So instead of having a general marketing prompt library, you could literally have a tab for something super specific, like Facebook ads for a window cleaning business. And ChatGPT will generate an entire library for you that matches your exact needs. We're just gonna have to take all the steps the prompt engineers used, and we're gonna break those down and have ChatGPT go from brainstorming ideas to writing the prompts and even organizing them. So I talked to my developers about this, and they thought this was absolutely insane. Like there's no way this is gonna work. The AI is just not good enough for this type of thing. And I'm like, you know what? Let's just test it out. Let's just mock it up and see what the results are gonna be. Lo and behold, with a quick mock-up, we tested this idea and the results were absolutely incredible. ChatGPT was able to easily come up with the use cases we couldn't even think of 
because they have so much internal data on how people use chat GPT. And that data is a lot more in depth than anything you can find online. The results were so insane that it got us thinking. If we built this feature where you can break down a task step by step to build a prompt library, why can't there be something to build a step by step flow for other types of tasks? Let's say we need a contract done, a study, or some other in depth projects. Why can't we allow people to build their own step by step flows where ChatGPT can brainstorm ideas, check its work, organize data, and just do the whole project step by step with one click. This was the moment that everything changed for us. This is when we realized the true power of ChatGPT and AI in general. The power is not one shot or single question prompting. The real power is in building flows or multi-step prompts. This is where real projects can be done by ChatGPT. So we built a system where you can go in and add multiple steps to a prompt and you can assign the first step to brainstorm ideas and then the other steps to generate content based on those ideas and even have the AI check its work in the end. This has been a total game changer. And that got us thinking, if we can unlock these features and totally change everything about ChatGPT, what else are they missing? What else can we do to totally change the game? I mean, this gave us insane confidence to just shoot for the moon. And after some brainstorming, we realized that so much of the work that we do is outside of ChatGPT. It's in Word documents, it's in emails, it's in spreadsheets, it's all over the web. It's even on YouTube. Why can't ChatGPT work inside your documents, inside your emails, be your assistant with spreadsheets, and just work across the web? Wouldn't that be insanely powerful? So that was the next big thing we set out to build, and it has turned into an absolute game changer. Because now you can use ChatGPT to highlight part of your document and have ChatGPT be your writing assistant. You can select different cells in a spreadsheet and have ChatGPT enrich the data inside your spreadsheet. But then we also noticed there's a lot of little things that are super annoying inside ChatGPT, like the input, for example. To create an amazing prompt, you sometimes need a lot of room to write examples, context, answer format, so that ChatGPT can generate the best answer. We've noticed ourselves that we were constantly using text files or Word documents to write out the prompt and then copy paste it into ChatGPT. And this is because it's just so inconvenient to write a long form amazing prompt inside ChatGPT. So we just added a button to expand the chat input to full screen so that you can write an amazing prompt right inside of ChatGPT. Now, these are just some of the features that we built over the past year as an upgrade to ChatGPT that we call Ultra. Now you're probably wondering, how much is it gonna cost me to upgrade my ChatGPT with Ultra? I mean, here's software that just unlocks ChatGPT and spreadsheets. If you click on pricing, you can see they charge $19 a month. This is literally just one of dozens and dozens of features we have with Ultra. So you're probably thinking we charge $50 a month or even $100 a month. The reality is actually exactly the opposite. My goal with this project is to make using AI for work accessible to as many people as possible. This is why for people watching this video today, we set up a 60% off discount link from an already super low price. You can get Ultra for $47 a year instead of the regular $129 a year price by going to getultra.ai slash go or clicking the link in the description. Once you get Ultra, upgrading your chat GPT is just one click Chrome extension install. You will see your chat GPT instantly transform and get all this new functionality. I'm looking forward to getting your feedback on the software and hearing about all the amazing things you guys are doing with it.